Welcome back to the Birthing Bessie blog, where we talk about real topics pertaining to pregnancy, birth, parenthood, partnerships, and just real life. Here on the blog, we don't shy away from talking about the hardships of parenthood. Instead, we encourage, validate, listen, and welcome you with open arms. Today is for the doulas. I am coming off of a long birth over the weekend, and I thought it would be a really good time to share with you what do I pack in my doula bag. Now, I know that there's tons of resources out there for doulas who um, are wondering, what should I bring with me when I go to a birth? Now, of course, it varies from person to person and location to location, right? So if you are attending a birth in a birthing center versus home versus hospital, you might bring different things with you. Now, to be super transparent with you guys, my birth bag, as you can see, is a hefty one. Um, and I've not cleaned it out in a really long time. So I always tell myself, after this next birth, I'm going to reorganize this and I'm going to get it in better shape than it is. But you know what? I also thought this is a great time to just show up, show up authentically as a doula of what kind of chaos I bring with me inside my birth bag. Now, for me personally, as most of you probably know, I primarily attend births in the hospital. And with that, I really rely on the fact that the hospital has just about any and everything that I feel like I need to be able to support a client there. So I don't bring a whole lot of things specifically for the way that I doula my clients. Um, when it comes to the hospital, I know that they have birthing balls, they have peanut balls, they have ice, they have gloves to where I can put ice in gloves. Um, they have showers, they have things for hydrotherapy, baths, um, heating pads. They really have any and everything that I feel like I need. Um, and, you know, I think it's fun at hospitals too um, to get a little creative. So I do have a rebozo that I will show you, but if I don't have that, or if it just feels like I need something quick in the moment, I'm not going to run over to my bag. I use the hospital sheets. Um, truly, I think that hospitals have any and everything that I personally have ever needed to help support clients through birth. So a lot of what you're going to see in my mess of a doula bag are things for me. These are things that I want to have um, that I might need for myself through the labor process. Not pictured here is going to be snacks and drinks. And that is a huge thing. That is probably the most important thing that I bring with me. Um, so I always bring my giant water bottle. And I always bring coffee, usually in a travel mug. Um, and I usually have a little lunchbox packed with snacks. For me, when I think about packing for um, food and water for the hospital, I also will pack um, some sort of electrolytes if I have them. When I am packing snacks, things I am considering when I pack them are, one, it needs to be something I can get to easily and just kind of pop some food in my mouth and then be right back with the client. So I'm usually packing something like crackers, trail mix, granola bars, um, maybe a banana. Uh, but something else that I'm really considering when I'm packing snacks for a birth is the scent of the snack. Um, I want it to be something that is not going to give off a lot of um, aroma, whether the laboring person is feeling nauseous or maybe hungry and not feeling like they want to eat. Um, I don't want to have something that is going to draw attention to the fact that I am eating in front of them. Um, but of course we need to sustain ourselves and, you know, with every birth, it's different for how long you're there and what it, what type of support and hands-on support it requires. Um, I also always recommend if it's a long birth and you're able to pop out for a bit, get out to the cafeteria or the lobby and actually try to sit down and eat some sort of meal. Um, for me, usually 
I'm packing snacks, quick toss in my mouth, chew while I'm supporting snacks. Um, and I don't really pack a full on meal. If I'm able to get out for a meal, I order something to the hospital or I go down to the cafeteria and try to sit and have food there. Again, this is my bag. It's massive. Um, and it's not clean at all. So I personally like to have something that can hold anything and everything. And I'm a chronic overpacker as well. And I tell clients this all the time when we're talking about them packing for the hospital. I am the type of person that I would rather have something and not need it or use it than want it and not have it. So that is kind of the motto that I go by when I'm packing. By the way, I got this canvas bag from Ikea. And I mainly got it because of this really cool feature here, which holds my rebozo. So my rebozo is just rolled up and stuffed in here. Um, you could also put a yoga mat in there if that's something you wanted to take to have for your clients, if they wanted to be on the floor at the hospital doing hands and knees or something along those lines. Um, so again, for me, this bag massive, messy, got it from Ikea. Um, typically what I put in these little front pockets are like my phone and my keys. Um, so that when I am leaving my car, it's right here. I'm going to lock it. Maybe sometimes I might put my wallet in here, um, in case the hospital that I'm going to requires ID. Um, anything that is just my own stuff for my personal travel, I pop in here. Now on the inside is really just big open. It has one pocket back here. Um, one thing I always take with me is just some, uh, some proof of certification. Um, so in here I have my certification, which personally I've not had to show, um, but I always have it just in case. I also have um, my actual certification here, but then I have copies of it behind here. Um, so I've got my certification. I've also got, like I said, copies of my certification. And then back here, I also have copies of my proof of insurance. This is not necessary and not really asked about at hospitals. Like I said, I've never even had to show my certification. I just have it in case. I have here just kind of stapled together all in one spot, things that they may or may not request at the hospital. Now, again, I've not experienced anybody requesting any of these items, but I have them just in case. Um, and also, and with that, I also in here just have um, a notebook, and a pen just in case I need to take notes or jot something down. Um, sometimes clients might request that um, I know or remember or share a little bit of um, their birth story with them. So some I've had clients request before like time frames at what times did certain things happen. So then in our postpartum visit, when we are debriefing the birth, we can get a better idea of what happened when. Um, so just in case I have a note, a little notebook and pen there. So I also have a charger. So you never know how long you're going to be at births. I have a very long charger. Um, you know, for overnight, if I'm, you know, charging my phone and actively being on my phone, potentially, if I'm staying up and everybody's getting rest, I want a long charger. But also, I love to take pictures of first moments for clients when they're first meeting their baby. And I want to make sure that I have the charge on my phone to last for that. So I always have a phone charger or two. I have some essential oil. With my essential oils, I have two lavenders, um, a peppermint, which can help with nausea, um, and then I also have Clary Sage, which can help when labor kind of stalls out. I also have tampons. I have been at births before where I needed a tampon or did not pack enough tampons. And believe it or not, at the time in my experience, the hospital was not able to help me there. So I feel like if I'm never sure, I'm throwing tons of tampons in my bag in case I need them. Okay, so other things that I have in my bag that are kind of for me, toothbrush, mouthwash, um, toothpaste. So I really like, again, if I'm snacking or if I get to pop out for a meal, 
I'm very conscious of um, scents that may or may not bother my clients. So when you're pregnant, usually your sense of smell is heightened a little bit. And during labor and delivery, um, a lot of times you're taking a lot of deep breaths. So I am just conscious of if I eat something, um, I don't want that scent to stay on me. So for me, again, if it's a long birth, especially, it's nice to kind of get out, run to the bathroom, freshen up a little bit. So I have always have a toothbrush, um, toothpaste and mouthwash there with me. Um, along the same lines, I have, don't know why, but three different deodorants <laughs> at my disposal um, for the same reason, freshening up, being a doula and being um, at births that are unmedicated and require a lot of physical support, um, freshening up feels good. And I sweat a lot at births because I'm working hard too. A lot of times because mom is working so hard, it's just warm in the room, body heat transfer. So when I'm hands-on with mom, we just are working hard together. And so again, just for the sake of trying to smell bad and being so close to a pregnant person and being able to freshen up, probably three deodorants is overkill. But like I said, we've not cleaned this out in a while. Poopery, which has leaked, which is why it's in a bag. Um, a little bit of just again, extra protection on the go, being able to have something. If I need to use the restroom, I'm covered there. I also have um, makeup remover, makeup wipes. So again, this goes back to just freshening up and trying to feel good. Um, lotion. Hospitals are so, 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 so dry. So lotion. Chapstick is a huge one. I usually have five or six different chapsticks floating around somewhere because, again, hospitals are so dry. Business cards. I, um, like I've said before, I really enjoy working with the hospital staff. Um, I have made really great connections with sometimes the front desk staff who know someone who um, has a family member who might want to become a doula or who wants a doula for their own birth. And so I always have some business cards on hand just in case someone inquires. I have something I can give them. I have this little gift that I got from a client one time. That's just a little heart keepsake. It says blessed. I feel like um, it's a good keepsake to keep in my doula bag just to remind myself that, um, you know, I'm being watched over. My clients are being watched over and I am truly blessed to do this work. This is how I kind of pack my doula bag. Again, it's everything is for me. I don't have a whole lot that I bring intentionally for clients. I'm really packing to make sure that I have everything I need because when I leave for a birth, I don't know when I'll be home again. So especially things to freshen up, to keep my phone charged, and then hydration and nutrition. Those are the main things that I bring with me to births. Hospitals truly have anything and everything else that you might want or need to benefit your clients as they labor. So I'd love for you to share with me what you have in your doula bag. What am I missing? Slide into my DMs on Instagram at ebbirthing or reach out to me via email at ebbirthing at gmail.com. Let me know what I'm missing. What can I pack to even be better set up for myself for birth? All right. Until next time, doulas, wishing you happy, easy butter birthing.